In this video, we will generally discuss about the myasthenia gravis. Well, the term myasthenia means muscular weakness and gravis means serious. Myasthenia gravis is a nephrogenic autoimmune disease of nephromuscular junction caused by the production of antibodies against the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. These antibodies bind to and block the acetylcholine receptors and thus the neurotransmission from the presynaptic nerve terminal to the muscle fibers diminishes. And with this, the postsynaptic site is damaged as well. This gives rise to progressive and extensive muscle weakness, although the muscles are normal. This autoimmune condition of unknown origin affects adult women more often than adult men in the ratio of 3 and 2. This may occur at any age, but usually affect those between 20 and 40. It is a serious and sometimes a fatal disease. Now, let's discuss about that what happens in myasthenia gravis. So, normally, Acetylcholine is synthesized in the motor nerve terminal and stored in the vesicles that are released spontaneously when in action potential reaches the nerve terminal. Acetylcholine from released vesicles combined with acetylcholine receptors initiating an action potential which is propagated along the muscle fiber triggering muscle contraction. In myasthenia gravis, uh, so in myasthenia gravis, neurotransmission pathway is unaffected and acetylcholine releasing occur is normal from the free synaptic nerve terminal. But, but the antibodies that are produced by the myasthenic patients against its own body parts, that is, the autoimmune antibodies, specifically IgG, reduce the number of available acetylcholine receptors by blocking the active sites of these receptors. And this leads to the reduction in the number of available acetylcholine receptors at the postsynaptic muscle membrane. In addition, the postsynaptic site is damaged and the poles are platened. These changes result in decreased neuromuscular transmission leading to failure to trigger muscle action potential and consequent weakened muscle contraction. This was somewhat about the pathophysiology of the myasthenia gravis. Uh, in the symptoms of myasthenia gravis are associated with skeletal muscles weakness mainly and the muscles which are more susceptible are the muscles of neck, limbs, eyeballs and the muscle responsible for eyelid movements, chewing, swallowing, speech and respiration. Typically, weakness begins with the extraocular muscles causes drooping eyelids or ptosis and double vision or diplopia. While other symptoms include slow and weak muscular contraction, inability to maintain the prolonged contraction of skeletal muscles, 
quick fatigability with repeated muscular contractions, weakness and fatigability of arms and legs, difficulty in swallowing due to weakness of the throat muscles, difficulty in speech due to weakness of muscles of speech, while in severe conditions there is paralysis of muscles. Patient dies mostly due to the paralysis of respiratory muscles. The diagnosis of myasthenia gravis is based on the detection of antibodies against the acetylcholine receptors in the body and also through the administration of short-acting anticholine esterase agent called adrophonium as these patients show quickly improvement in strength and response to administration of adrophonium. There is no specific treatment of myasthenia gravis and it is treated symptomatically. For this purpose, the choline esterase inhibitors such as neostigmine and fyridostigmine are used. These drugs inhibit choline esterase which degrades acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. So, by blocking this enzyme, the released acetylcholine accumulate in the side of action for a longer period of time. Beside this, neostigmine also has a direct activating action on these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Neostigmine used as 15 mg orally after every 6 hours but can be adjusted according to the condition while pyridostigmine is an alternative to neostigmine and require less frequent dosing steroids specifically prednisolone also can be used 30 to 60 mg per day which have immunosuppressive action and may block the release of autoimmune antibodies against the nicotinic receptors. Another technique called plasmapheresis is used to remove antibodies from the blood but cannot prevent the production of antibodies by the immune system. The patient's must go for repeated sessions of this treatment while another strategy called thymectomy also can be used for myasthenic patients and with this thanks for watching and support us by subscribing to our channel